Welcome to the Old Tom Radio Superman Show. This is your host, Adam Graham, coming to you from Boise, Idaho, where the mayor committed 100% to the cause of, uh, getting, of getting rid of corruption, changed his mind, uh, of the corrupt uh, district attorney, changed his mind. Uh, it's unbelievable, a politician making a statement one moment and completely reversing himself within a 60 seconds. Um, okay, actually, it's not big of a, that big of a stretch, but uh, we're going to find out why, and we're going to find out about Andrea's big radio theory, um, and and say and see what exactly uh, is is going on, and see if that's the answer. But before we get started, I want to encourage you, if you enjoy serial fiction, to check out Laser and Sword magazine, lasersword.adamsweb.us. Check out our store, lulu.com slash lasersword. But now, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into The Invisible Man, Part 4. Presenting the transcription feature, Superman! And now, Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with physical powers far beyond those of mortal men, and who fights a never-ending battle against crime and oppression, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper. As you remember, Kent and Lois Lane had been assigned by editor Perry White to write a series of articles for the Daily Planet campaign to oust the crooked district attorney Parker from office. The facts for this expose were to be supplied by Ralph Remsen, former assistant DA, who had resigned in protest against Parker's method. When we last saw them, they were surprised by a baffling obstacle, an invisible man who, although he could not be seen, talked with them and warned them against publishing the expose. As our story opens today, Kent has just returned to the city room of the Daily Planet, where he finds Editor White and Remsen greatly excited. Listen. Here, read this note, Kent. It arrived from the Invisible Man only a short while ago. Let's see. My last warning. Start your presses tonight and you won't print another story for weeks to come. Huh. You know, Chief, I have half a mind to find out exactly what the Invisible Man can do. Just how important his threats and warnings are. Uh, but the warning. Uh, what do you think, Mr. Renson? I am not sure, Mr. White. Never mind the warning. Let's start the presses and see what happens. All right. We'll do it. Joe? Yes, sir? Start your presses for the morning edition. Okay, Mr. White. Start your presses. Start your presses. Yes, but I have a feeling that something may happen at almost any minute. How right you are, Mr. White. What? Why, why, it's the invisible man again. That voice sounded as if, as if he were standing right here among us. It can't be. But it is. I'm standing right here beside you, Mr. White. Why? Why didn't you heed my warning? Now you have forced me into something that I find most unpleasant, most distasteful. And just exactly what is that, Mr. Kent? You're so serene about the whole matter, so confident that you all can win out against me. Gentlemen, listen to me. When you started those presses, you also started a time bomb concealed in one of them. A time bomb? Joe! Joe, hold the presses! Stop immediately! You bet your life will Wait a minute. That won't do any good, I'm afraid. Stopping the presses won't stop the bomb. It won't? I decided, Mr. White, that if you were foolhardy enough to disregard my advice, I'd teach you a lesson. You started the bomb, you cannot stop it. Your presses will be blown into wreckage. As I said in my note, it will be weeks before you publish another edition of your paper. Oh, Kent, this is terrible. What can we do? Think of what it means to the paper. If those presses are blown up, if we're unable to get another edition on the streets in weeks, we're ruined, man. Utterly ruined. Well, I, I, for one, don't see what you can do about it, Mr. Oh, we've got to do something. Those presses are worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. If we're forced out of business for even a few days, we'll... we'll... Kent, can't you think of something? Yes. Kent, think of something. You got Mr. White into this? Figure some way to get him out. He's right. You did get me into this, Kent. It was you who said to go ahead and start those presses. Kent, you simply got oh, to... Just do... a minute, please. We're all standing here wasting time talking about the value of those presses. 
And we haven't even begun to think about the lives that may be lost in this thing. How much time have we? By my watch, you have exactly two minutes. Two minutes? You have one chance, Kent. If you can find the bomb and destroy it within two minutes, you'll be all right. Yes. If you fail to find it within two minutes, remember, I'm afraid you'll have to suffer the consequences. You now have exactly one minute and 45 seconds. <laughs> good luck, gentlemen. And good night. Of course, we've simply got to find that bomb. It's our only chance. Looks like it, Lois. You men. Yeah. You men here in the press room. Right. You've got a minute and 30 seconds to find that bomb. Right. Better right. start looking for it right now. Yeah. Somebody better keep a good watch on the time. All right. Oh, Benson, find that press over there. Okay, okay, okay. Mr. White, yes. you take that one over there. Right. Come on, Lois. We'll have a look at the one near the window. Okay. Anybody see it yet? Oh, no. How much time have we, Clark? Well, no, we have one minute. We've got to get out of here. Keep looking, man. I'll watch the time. I'll get you out of here before it goes off. Don't worry. Suppose there's some mistake in the time. Suppose the invisible man deliberately gave us the wrong time. Gotta take our chances on that. Oh, hang it all. Where can it be? No, it's nowhere to be found in that first Kent. Well, try another one. Keep looking. Keep looking. It's too late, Kent. Too late. If we don't leave this room. What? Look. What is it, Lord? There it is. You can see it behind that veil of paper. Yes, that's it, all right. Get it out of there, by heaven's sake. There's no time. Less than 30 seconds left. You men, everybody, get out of this room as quickly as you can. Come on, you guys. Come on, get going, Chief. There's no time to lose all those precious hundreds of thousands of dollars. Don't mind the money. Think of your life. Come on, let's get out of here. Oh, my All right, folks. Everybody's out of there now. Are you sure of that? Yes. Yeah. Close and bolt these doors. Come on. Give me a hand. Come on. Wait. Where's Clark? I don't see Clark. Why, well, he's among the men somewhere. I saw him come out. I'm sure of it. But I don't see him. Clark? 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 Fifteen seconds and that bomb will go off. No time to fly out the window with it. And I can't get rid of it any other way. Well, only one thing to do. I'll have to cover it with my body. That Superman, it can't harm me. Well, here goes. Now, there we are. Only a second to go. Could I have missed time? Oh. Well, that's that. Thank heavens everything's all right. No one's been harmed and the pressures are still running. Sounded like a bomb to me. Why? Couldn't have been anything else. It was kind of muffled. There hasn't been any other explosions. Yeah, it was muffled. Maybe, maybe something went wrong with it. You think we can go in now? Yes, I think we can chance it. What? Oh, Clark, there you are. I've been looking all over for you. I put a call through for the fire department. I thought we might be needing them. Well, I guess we can go in and see what damage has been done. All right, Joe. Yeah? You can open the doors now. Yes, sir, Mr. White. Right, look. There's a hole blown in the floor. But that seems to be about all the damage that was done. I can't understand it. It was no small bomb that blew that hole in the floor. Why didn't the explosion blow those presses in the smithereens? Well, that is odd, isn't it? Well, whether it's odd or not, the important thing is no harm was done. The presses are still running, Chief. And it looks as if we'll make the morning edition. At least the first expose of District Attorney Parker will reach the public in time. The mayor will see you in a very short while. Uh, thank you. Yes, sir. Well, it begins to look as if we're making a little headway. We've published two stories about District Attorney Parker, and the third is in the presses now. With Mayor Healy's help, we can't fail to get Parker indicted and put where he belongs. There's just one thing that worries me, Ransom. Yes, what's that, Ryan? I had a call from Parker this morning, threatening to sue the paper for libel. Are you sure you can prove the statements that we've been making? You're sure the documents you've shown me are authentic? Absolutely. There's no doubt of it, Chief. If Ramson here will excuse my saying so, I've taken the trouble to check on some of them. I didn't think it would do any harm. Not at all, Tim. The thing that gets me is that invisible man. Now, you people can talk all you want about being a trick, but that voice gives me the willies. I keep listening for it, expecting it to speak almost any moment. Why, well, I never know when I'm alone anymore or when I'm not. Now, don't let it get you down, Chief. This whole thing will be cleaned up before very long. Uh, you've been saying that for days, Kent. I wish you'd talk less and act more. Well, I'm doing my best, Chief. You can't ask more than that. The mayor will see you now. This way. Oh, thank you. Well, gentlemen, Miss Lane, I believe. Sit down, won't you? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I believe you know why we've come. I certainly do, Mr. White. I've been reading those articles about District Attorney Parker in your newspaper, sir. And I must say you're to be commended on the wonderful service you're rendering the public. Uh, thank you, sir. I know you're busy, so I'll come right to the point. Your Honor, can we count on your support? I'm with you all the way. Now, what would be your suggestion, Mr. White? Uh, for grand jury investigation? I think so, Your Honor. You name the men you want, and Mr. Remsen here will give them all the proof they need. Good. 
I'll take care of that this very afternoon. And uh, now, gentlemen, Miss Lane, you know I'm a very busy oh, man, and I... Certainly, sir. Uh, we won't take up any more of your time. Oh, I'm afraid you'll have to. What was that? Did, did someone say something? It, it's the Invisible Man again. The what? The Invisible Man, Mr. Mayor. No time to explain now. Mr. White can do that later. What is Your Honor, not... I have only one thing to say to you. Don't form a grand jury. Don't support this investigation. What in the name of... Who is this person? What is... I said I had no time to go into that. However, believe me when I say that if you support this campaign against District Attorney Parker, you'll be doing yourself a great injury. An injury, Your Honor, from which you will never recover. Whoever you are, sir, I'm not to be intimidated. I've been through this sort of thing before. It's been my experience that most threats have no foundation. Mm, you'll find this one has. I'm no coward, sir, whoever you are. I have a duty to the people of this city which I intend to fulfill. You can't frighten me. Your phone will ring in a moment or two. We'll wait until you receive the message I know is coming. And then we'll see what your answer is. I might even go so far as... <laughs> I dare say that's the call now. Pick up the phone, Mr. Mayor. Uh, you, you... Your phone is ringing, Mr. Mayor. Uh, hello? Yes, this is the mayor speaking. What's that? Yes? Yes? Thank you. Yes, goodbye. Mr. White, I... I'm afraid you'll have to carry on your investigation without my help. There is nothing I can do for you. What message did the mayor receive by telephone? What made him change his mind? And by the way, have you solved the riddle of the invisible man? Be sure to listen to the next thrilling and mystifying episode of this story with Superman. And remember, tune in the next thrilling installment of the transcription feature, Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics Magazine. All right, well, welcome back. Um, Andrea is still insisting the uh, recording device uh, is a possibility. They couldn't find it in the room, but maybe they missed it. Um, but how they got this thing to blow up to be destroyed when it hit the 100th mile is... Um, is going to be interesting to see. Um, here, though, in this episode, I think is something worth noting is the revision of the Clark Kent character into a bit of a cowardly one. Uh, this certainly, for more than the first hundred plus episodes, um, is uh, has not been a problem. Has not been a characteristics. Um, but I, they, they go ahead and they do the rewrite here. And the challenge I think you run into, if you have two characters that are brave and that are always going to be in the action, you've got a problem if they're the same person. So if one person pretends to be a coward, you know, if, they pretend, if Clark Kent pretends to be a coward so he can hide back be, and move in as Superman, uh, then, that's gonna, then that's going to make more sense. Now, I... <laughs> I don't know. I, I tend, to, tend to think that in many ways, uh, these these changes can occur to a point where the where you really start to have a have an alternate personality that's not likable. And I think you saw that with the Clark Kent, perhaps in the uh, 1970s movies. He was just, you know he was basically portrayed as a dork, and uh, when he was Clark Kent, he acted like a total complete uh, dork, and then. Uh, and so that he could be Superman. Uh, I tend to prefer the more balanced portrayal of, say, uh, uh, Superman the Animated Series from the 90s or Lois and Clark the New Adventures of Superman. The trend towards making him a little wimpy, I don't know how I feel about that. All right, well, that's it for this week's uh, uh, episodes. We will see you back here on Sunday. Be sure to check out Laser and Sword Magazine, where we will have... Uh, tomorrow we're going to have uh, part uh, part six of the Crossroads story, and also check out the 
uh, Laser and Sword uh, annual uh, annual edition at lulu.com slash laser sword. For now, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.